You are welcome to this brief introduction to the New Testament Epistle to the Galatians. The author was Saul of Tarsus, also known as the Apostle Paul. The letter was written in about the year 49 CE. It was sent to newly founded, mostly Gentile churches in the south of the Roman province of Galatia. The occasion, Paul wrote this epistle to the Galatians to counter a teaching that requires Gentiles to follow Moses' law. Barnabas and Saul, sent out by a church in Antioch of Syria, traveled to Cyprus and from thence on to Pamphylia and then into the southern portion of the province of Galatia, visiting in particular Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe before returning to Antioch in Syria. Comparing the book of Acts with the epistle to the Galatians, we are able to infer a probable chronology of events, beginning with the year 33, some weeks or months after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, when Jesus appears to Saul near the city of Damascus. Thereafter, Saul traveled to Arabia before returning to Damascus. At Jerusalem, the believers put him on a ship and sent him home to Tarsus. About three years later, Saul went to visit the apostle Peter, staying with him for about 15 days. Meanwhile, Jews and Gentiles were being converted to Christ in Antioch of Syria. The apostles in Jerusalem sent Barnabas, who traveled to Antioch and ministered there for some time, realizing the need for someone who understood Gentiles. Barnabas went and found Saul and brought him to Antioch. From thence, Barnabas and Saul were sent on a short-term mission to carry financial aid to the poor churches of Jerusalem. When they returned to Antioch, they brought with him the young man, John Mark. Some 14 years after his conversion, that is, in about the year 47, Saul, Barnabas, and Titus go to Jerusalem because of a revelation that Jesus gave to Saul. Titus, a Hellenistic Jew, possibly a Gentile, whilst there, refused to be circumcised. Nevertheless, the apostles James, Peter, and John affirmed Paul's own apostleship to the Gentiles. Some time later, Peter and James led a delegation of Jewish believers to Antioch. Whilst there, their hypocrisy misled Barnabas, for which Saul reproaches Peter before the others. Possibly the year following, church leaders at Antioch commissioned Barnabas and Saul for work to which the Holy Spirit had called them. Barnabas and Saul planted new churches in Galatia before returning to Antioch. Meanwhile, men from Judea, near Jerusalem, came and began teaching the Gentiles that they must be circumcised in order to be saved. Paul and Barnabas immediately entered into debate with these teachers. About that time, Paul writes and sends this epistle to the Galatians in order to counteract the false teaching. Soon thereafter, Paul and Barnabas lead a delegation through Phoenicia and Samaria onto Jerusalem where the church, the apostles, and the elders discussed the issue of circumcision for Gentiles. They then gave their opinion and wrote a letter that Paul and Barnabas brought to Antioch and 
sent on to other churches. The message or argument of the entire epistle to the Galatians can be summarized in a number of points. These are adapted from Donald Guthrie's New Testament Introduction of 1963. First, Paul asserts that he received his apostleship directly from Jesus Christ, and that this Christ had given himself for our sins to set us free. He wrote, The Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age. Second main point, Paul rebukes those who pervert the good news, that is, the gospel, writing, If anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, then let that one be accursed. Thirdly, Paul relates several facts about himself. First, he received his teaching directly from God. Although he formerly was zealous for Jewish traditions, he now preaches the good news amongst Gentiles. After two meetings with the Jerusalem apostles, they affirmed his apostleship. He once exercised his authority by rebuking another apostle. And fifthly, he asserts that the real issue is a choice between faith in Christ and following the law. He wrote, We have come to believe in Christ Jesus so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law because no one will be justified by works of the law. In a fourth section, Paul argues that the Galatians had received the Holy Spirit by their faith and not by keeping the law. He cites the example of Abraham, who received God's blessing by faith, not by keeping law. Thus, the law imposed a curse on human beings, which Christ removed by becoming a curse on our behalf. He wrote, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Fourthly, the covenant promise that God made with Abraham before the law came remains valid. The main purpose of the law was to prepare the way for Christ who fulfills the promise. Thus, it is faith in Christ that redeems us from the law by making us free sons of God. In a fifth section, Paul makes a personal appeal. The Galatians were formerly slaves to elemental spirits, so they should not return to being slaves. When he was with them, they had such good will towards him, but false teachers have turned them away from him. Yet, as friends, he and they belong to a heavenly Jerusalem, being promised children of God, like Isaac was. And by summary, freedom excludes circumcision and legalism. He writes, In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. Sixthly, Paul expounds on freedom in Christ. He asserts, Those who oppose freedom stand condemned. Freedom, however, leads not to license, but to mutual love. For the Spirit frees us from the works of the flesh, guides us, and bears his fruit in us. Quote, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fourthly, the spiritual seek to restore those who succumb to temptation 
and the spiritual work for the good of all, reaping eternal life. Lastly, then, section 7, Paul exposes basic motives. He explains, false teachers want to boast about religion, thereby avoiding persecution from the cross of Christ. Whereas, Paul boasts about the cross of Christ being a new creation. We end this introduction with his own prayer. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ.